Hello, this is Chuck Carnival. I'm the Chuck in the Market Sub Chuck. And uh, today's blog was titled, uh, you know, Treasury Bonds Risky. And the, the reason for this um, title was based on the fact that interest rates are really low right now. In fact, um, there's almost no yield on real short term bonds, virtually nothing. I mean, 0 0.03%, 300 to 1% on a three month, just a little over one tenth of 1% on a six month. And even if you go out 10 years, you know, you're still only looking at about 33 to 3.4% yields on a treasury bond. And odds are, faced with um, future inflation as a result of the you know, recent debacle with mortgages, et cetera, um, the Fed someday will be raising interest rates. And of course, if you go out and um, reach out with long-term bonds right now to get more yield because you need the income, then you face the risk of a lot of volatility in your stock price, even as much possibly in equities. I want you to notice here I have a chart showing the interest rate scale going back to 1996. In fact, uh, I'm going to extend that out a little bit for you and take that back as far as my data is capable and go back almost a complete 20 years all the way back to 1991. As you can see, you know, interest rates were around 8%, 8.26% 8 in 12, 31, 1990. And, you know, we've had a steady decrease in interest rates all the way into the current, um, you know, current market or, or current environment where now we've got 3.41 on 10-year treasury bonds. And this is the interest rate on, a, you know, a 10-year note. And, uh, Treasury note, and the bottom line of this is these are, you know, as you can see, historically very, very low rates. Now, obviously, at some point, if rates rise, the value of bonds are going to go down. But there are some interesting companies out there, some uh, extremely high-quality blue-chip stocks. Cisco is one. This is a company that delivers, um, um, you know, prepackaged foods to restaurants and hotels and hospitals and other purveyors of food. And you've probably seen their trucks going down the highway. I want you to notice this company's got great earnings growth over the last. Um, 20 years. I'm going to shorten this chart to 15 years just to make this, because um, I have more data. I have to skip every other year in my 20-year charts because I don't have room to type in all the numbers. You can see this company's grown at around 12%. I want you to notice that the black line, which is the monthly closing stock prices, this company has always traded at a premium to its growth rate throughout this whole period. Uh, there's no time on this chart. Um, it got close here back in July of 1996 where the black line, which is the stock price, came down to earnings. You know, once again in 1997. Otherwise, the price of this company's um, stock has traded significantly above its earnings growth rate until the current recession. So, you know, uh, as you can see by this picture, obviously the current value of this company is um, trading at a historical low valuation. The light blue shaded area represents dividend income. I want you to notice you can buy the stock based on yesterday's close with a 3.4% dividend yield. That's almost exactly identical to what a 10-year Treasury note is paying right now, as I pointed out, you know, 3.41 versus 3.4. The difference, however, is if you look at this company historically going back since 1996, um, they were paying a 12 cent dividend in 1996, and they've increased that dividend every year throughout, um, you know, this period so that your yield, you know, would be increasing. Now, Typically, when the stock was normally valued, your entry yield would be about 1.5%. But today, because of this low valuation, you're actually able to buy this starting out with 3.4%. So, you know, trying to find a time frame to match that, you know, you can see here it was, it was yielding 3.2% based on growth yield back in 2001. But look how quickly that yield grew. You know, within a matter of years, you know, your yield was up over 9 or 10%, starting out with a 3.2% yield. Plus, you had some decent appreciation in this company based on its earnings growth. So, you know, if we even look at this back at the last 10 years and compare this to a 10-year Treasury note, um, you know, I think you'll see what I'm talking about. And this, again, is a period where valuations were reasonably high. Um, this company had still had 10% earnings growth, but it was overvalued even by its historical norm at this point. So, you know, you start out with a very low dividend yield, but I do want you to notice that your yield increased every year. But here's the point I want to make is you did get some capital appreciation, you know, um, based on the overvaluation. When you, if you started out 15 years ago when it was reasonably priced, then you actually ended up with almost 10% capital appreciation. And keep in mind, a treasury bond would have only given you, you know, whatever the yield was back in 1996, which um, um, was probably pretty decent. You could have... You know, back then you would have received something in the neighborhood of, uh, you know, 6% um, on a 10-year Treasury bond. I can't find a spot here. 6.85 on July of 96, a little less than that, just under 5. So you could have got 5 or 6% yield on a 10-year Treasury bond. Um, this would have, um, you know, given you a lower yield than that, obviously, over time. But eventually it would have caught up with a Treasury bond. But the difference is your 100000 would have grown to 350000 So starting out with a high 3.4% yield today, 
you know, you've got the opportunity to see that same growth because this yield, I want to remind you, is based on earnings growth. It's not based on, um, you know, what the um, uh, market's doing. You also have a chance to see, because of the low valuation, some appreciation on a company like this. And in the meantime, if you bought treasury bonds and interest rates go up, you know, it's the value of your treasury bonds would fall. You know, there are, I'll show you two quick other examples here of similar companies. You can get 3.2% yield on McDonald's today. Look at how consistently McDonald's has grown at over 11% a year. They also, just like Cisco, have increased their dividend, you know, year after year after year. And then once again, you'd have had an inflation hedge here where your 100000 wouldn't have just been worth 100. It would have actually grown to 212. And, and also, McDonald's is trading, as you can see, at a typically, you know, low valuation. Any other time you could have bought McDonald's at the, when it was under the under the stock price line would have been excellent long-term holds. So, uh, you know, this Chuck Harvey and, uh, you know, right now you might want to take a look at some of the extremely high-quality blue-chip stocks, even names like PepsiCo um, that don't pay quite the high yield that um, these other two do, that still is almost paying 3% yield, um, you know, is a company that you might also want to consider. So, you know, there are some real good opportunities out there if you're willing to look and do your homework. I um, hope this gave you a, a different perspective on, on income. Um, and what we call growth yield. You know, these companies that grow every year and increase their dividend can be very, very attractive, especially if you can, you know, buy them like you can today at um, yields that are, you know, excessively high based on um, how you would normally be able to buy them. And this is Chuck Harville saying I hope this time gave you some insight and income. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again tomorrow.